Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. Today I will describe the histology of the esophagus with some of my hand-drawn illustrations for your clear understanding, detailed figures from the DeVries Atlas of Histology and some awesome 3D models. I promise by the end of this video, the histology of the esophagus will be as clear as the daylight. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Histologically, the esophagus has four layers, from inside to outside, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscle layer, and the serosa or the adventitia. You can see the first layer, the mucosa, it lies close to the illumen of the esophagus, and the serosa is the outermost one. Let us unwrap these layers one by one. First, the mucosa. This portion, it has three layers again, the lining epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa. The lining epithelium of the esophagus is a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. If we zoom this picture, you will be able to see this is multilayered or you can say stratified. You can also see the top layer here. The nucleuses of this layer are flat. The name of the epithelium depends on the top layer. Here, the top layer is the squamous epithelium. So this is stratified squamous epithelium and it is also non-keratinized. If it was filled up with the keratin filaments or if it was keratinized, then it would be totally water impermeable because the keratin filaments are water impermeable. We do not expect that uh, here in this region. This is why uh, this is non-keratinized and as a whole, we can say this is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. I have explained why the esophagus is non-keratinized. Now I have a question for you guys that is why the esophagus is multi-layered if you can guess the answer then please put it down in the comment section below and i'll let you know if you're right then we have the lamina propria it is a connective tissue layer you can see these um, blue dots they are the nucleuses of the connective tissue cells of course as uh, this is a connective tissue layer it has the connective tissue cells connective tissue fibers and you can also see many blood vessels the arterioles the venules and um, I can also see a lymphatic nodule here so these are the contents of this layer below the lamina propria you can see the fine and thin smooth muscle layer this is the muscle of the mucosa or the muscularis mucosa this smooth muscle layer separates the mucosa from the submucosa and also helps in the movement of this mucosa by its contraction so all these three layers together forms the mucosa the next layer below the mucosa is the submucosa it is also a connective tissue layer as this is a connective tissue layer it obviously contains the connective tissue cells connective tissue fibers, the arterioles, venules, lymphatics, nerves. Here it also contains some glands you can see, known as the esophageal glands. These glands secrete mucus. These glands have two portions, the secretory portion known as the mucus acinae and the excretory portion known as the excretory duct. So these are the mucus acinae here in this section and these are the ducts. The mucus secreted from these glands lubricate and protect the mucosa. You can see a nerve plexus here and uh, this is the submucosal plexus or the Meissner's plexus. It controls the esophageal glands and the blood flow in this region. We completed the second layer, the submucosa. Now let us move into the next layer, the muscle layer. The muscle layer or the muscularis externa is composed of two layers, the inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer. In the upper third of the esophagus, the muscle layer contains only skeletal muscle fiber. In the middle third of the esophagus, it contains both skeletal and smooth muscle fibers, while the lower third of the esophagus is composed entirely of the smooth muscle fibers. Now I'll show you how to identify if it is the skeletal or the smooth muscle. The skeletal muscle fibers are long, cylindrical and uh, have peripheral nucleus. Here in the inner circular layer you can see the long fibers and also you can see the nucleuses are placed peripherally and if you observe more closely you will find the cross striations. So obviously this is a skeletal muscle without any doubt. 
Now let us see the outer longitudinal layer. These are the muscle fibers. You can see the fibers together are placed in a bundle. These bundles are known as the muscle fascicle and the fascicles are covered by perimysium, a connective tissue covering. You can compare with the model here on the right side. These are the muscle fibers. Fibers together are forming the muscle fascicle. So this is the cross section and you can compare the picture with this model. You can also see the nucleuses here are situated peripherally. So this is of course a slide of skeletal muscle. In this slide, there is only skeletal muscle fibers. So this section is from the upper one third of the esophagus. The next slide will help you to identify the skeletal and smooth muscles both. Let us start with the inner circular layer. You can see the skeletal muscle fibers. Additionally, there are some smooth muscle fibers as well. Now, how am I so confident that these were smooth muscle fibers? Because we know smooth muscle fibers are short, fusiform in shape. They have no cross striations and you will find the nucleuses are placed centrally. Now the outer longitudinal layer. These are skeletal muscles as uh, they are placed in bundles and also the nucleuses are placed peripherally. But look at the other muscle type. They do not form any bundles and not even covered by the perimysium and the nucleuses are placed centrally. So these are smooth muscle fibers. In this picture we found both skeletal muscle and smooth muscle fibers. So this section is from the middle third of the esophagus. Now the next picture. In this picture we can see both the inner circular and the outer longitudinal layers exhibit only smooth muscles. So this section is from the lower third of the esophagus. Between the inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle layer you can see a special type of nerve plexus here. This is known as the myenteric plexus. This nerve plexus innervates these muscle layers and helps in peristalsis. Also at this side this layer has blood and lymph vessels. So that is it. Um, that's about the muscle layer. Finally, we have the serosa. It is also a connective tissue layer. This layer contains the connective tissue cells, fibers, and also it is rich in arterioles, venules, lymphatics, nerves, and adipose tissue. And it is covered by a simple squamous epithelium, aka the mesothelium. But the serosa is present only when the esophagus becomes intraperitoneal, I mean after crossing the diaphragm. So only the lower third of the esophagus will be covered by the serosa. And when the esophagus is not covered with the peritoneum then the outer connective tissue layer is known as the adventitia. The upper third and the middle third of the esophagus lies above the diaphragm and these two portions are not covered by the peritoneum. So they are covered by the adventitia, not serosa. Adventitia and serosa both are connective tissue layers but uh, the serosa is present only where the peritoneum is present and the serosa secretes serous fluid in the peritoneal cavity but the adventitia does not produce any sort of serous fluid. Now let us see some pictures from the Deferis Atlas of Histology 11th edition. They give two pictures here. Now I can see in both the pictures there is a thick lining epithelium which is most probably the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Then uh, we have the lamina propria. We can see the blue dots, the connective tissue cells, the arterioles, venules. I can also see a lymphatic nodule here in the lamina propria. Then we have the muscularis mucosa, this thin and tiny muscle layer. So this portion is the mucosa. Below this, we can see the submucosa. We can see the connective tissue cells, arterioles, venules, and esophageal glands, of course. Now the main part, uh, both this section shows the inner circular and outer longitudinal layer. Let us zoom in the picture and have a closer look. Here, in the first picture, all the nucleuses are situated peripherally, I think. Um, let's check the both layers. Yep, they both exhibit the peripheral nucleus. So this is obviously skeletal muscle. This section is from the upper third of the esophagus. Now the muscles of the second picture. The second picture is showing the central nucleus. So this is a smooth muscle. Let's check the both layers. Uh, yes, all the nucleuses are placed centrally. These are smooth muscle fibers without any doubt. So this section is from the lower third of the esophagus. And um, there you have it. A 
quick dive into the histology of the esophagus. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon and stay updated for our upcoming video on the development of the esophagus and some clinical correlations. Thank you for joining us today and until next time, keep those esophagus happy and healthy.